Okay. Looks like we're recording. This is still a cool app. Um, yeah, I am recording from the... Uh, a short recording to tell you this. Let not the foot of pride come against me. Let not the hand of the wicked remove me. There are workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. This is the end of Psalm 36. Uh, what is it um, that we have this term? There are workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. The next psalm is Psalm 37 about what happens to the wicked, i.e. those who are the workers of iniquity. In, if we turn to Matthew 21, Matthew, I'm sorry, 7, 21, 7. If we're in Matthew 7, verse 21, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we not cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. And I will then profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that, what's the term? You that work iniquity. 36. You'd think I'd keep a placeholder there, but I don't. You'd think I'd be able to learn that by now, but I haven't. <laughs> there are workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. So it seems that the warning from the Lord is, you know, the, the religious spirit is one that works iniquity, meaning it's, it's someone that is in the world and plays by the world's rules and is a friend of the world, which is called a worker of iniquity, and yet has the outer cloak of, say, churchianity or religion or weekend, uh, weekend church people or whatever. And they do a lot of praying and singing and they buy and sell their records and their CCM industry and all that, which is no different from the regular music industry. And they are obvious, obvious hypocrites. And the Lord says, depart from me, I don't know you. In other words, you never trusted me, rather you worked iniquity for provision. Therefore, we have no connection because my people trust me for their walk, their daily walk. You know, our Father art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, daily bread. Who provides that? The Lord, give us this day our daily bread. What does Psalm 37 say? It says, I've never seen the children of the Lord go hungry or their children begging for bread. Yet, through lack of faith and through fear, people go back to the ways of the world to work iniquity because the world system is the workers of iniquity. That's the point. Is the world. That's the point. Worker of iniquity is a very technical term. It's a very technical term. It repeats throughout the Bible. It's very technical. It's more than a couple of times. It's very technical. A worker of iniquity is not just someone steeped in iniquity. Not someone just falling into a season of sin even. It's far worse than that and more insidious. A worker of iniquity is someone who is cut off from God through their choice to, 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 to sow to the world system in order to reap um, their daily bread rather than through faith trusting the Lord for their daily bread. It's just that simple. It's, it's, there's really no mystery to it. It's not a mystery of iniquity. It's a worker of iniquity. Because the world system to God is iniquity. The ways of man that seem right to a man, but that way leads to what? Death. Because why? Because the way that seems right to men, to man, to humanity, 
is the working of iniquity for um, provision and sustenance. Now, the kicker is, all these people, when they're in their 20s and 30s, think they're going to go on and on and on and everything's going to be great. But the thing is, is uh, what ends up happening is, uh, it, you know, what I've seen lately is I've seen all these people go, gone broke and having, you know, and, and, and they're just in terrible straits from the Obama economy and from the last few years. And they were people that, that were very much part of the system. And now they're asking questions. Why didn't the system provide for me? Why didn't the world system you know, the spiritual world system, which is actually denial of Christ. Why didn't that work for me? You know, it worked for everybody. And, and that's an illusion that it works for people. It always, what ends up happening is they fall. And as it says in Psalm 36, which is very wise, they fall and they don't rise up again. The lambs don't have this problem. The lambs, a lamb by definition cannot work in equity. <laughs> they don't, I mean, this is, this is, uh, you're talking about salvational uh, aspects. Oh, a lamb could deny Christ, and and I suppose, but those who are like born lambs, they um, they're pretty typical. You can spot them anywhere. You know their personalities. You know who they are. You know, I have friends in the world who are not lambs, but protectors of the lambs. You know, people that. Uh, I suppose these would be the people that would put the Jews, hide the Jews in Nazi Germany in their houses. And then there are people in America that they, they, they just consider, it's funny, because most of the lambs I know uh, who don't work in equity are doing fine, thank you very much, in their bank accounts, in their employment. Not everybody, not everybody. Certainly not, you know, certain trusted brethren, not, I can't say it's across the board, but more so than in the world today after the uh, Obama economy. Isn't that interesting? And I've seen them when they get in their 50s and 60s. When they fall then, uh, usually they don't get up because they're broken. And then the, the world tries to forget about them. I don't want those cooties on me. And they, they continue on. Hollywood is a great example. I've seen that over and over again. Where someone was just fell down in Hollywood after being a, thinking they had it made. And then the whole community shuns them. Right? Because they don't want those cooties. And then they get a strong dose of what it's really like in the world. When you trust the beast for your provision. And where it really leads. Conversely, God will, will bankrupt people that he loves because it helps to break them. So they will cry out, Abba, Father, save me. Because he wants them, because they're his children. And so he will break those he loves. As with me, it was pretty, pretty typical. Bankruptcy, um, health, um, just a number of things. And he's kept me in kind of a semi-broken state the whole time. So why? Because he knows if uh, I, well, now it doesn't really matter. But back, back in the day, you know, if I got any running room, it'd be like, okay, I'll take it from here, God. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'll take it from here. That was my deal. And, um, you know, uh, I may not have been in the world system working iniquity, but certainly I was working my own iniquity in the sense of, relying on myself rather than on the Lord, trusting in my own instincts rather than the Lord, trusting, um, you know, propping myself up as a God in a delusion and an illusion rather than seeing the truth that it's not about me, not about you, not about a, a, a humanity at all. It's about him and what he's doing and what he's doing is always going to wind up as good for those who love him, trust him and are called according to his purpose. When you realize that it is all his purpose, then you relax. Gloom and doom. All right. It's about time we got to the gloom and doom people. The gloom and doom people out there have all lost their faith. They are not relying on the Lord, but on fear mongers for their provision, for their, for their sustenance, for their, for their mental provision, if you will. Relying on their own wits for their jobs and things and having a terrible struggle. They're in a downward spiral, and, you know, the rapture didn't rescue them. Um, the World War III, as promised, didn't happen yet. All the things the gloom and doomers predict don't happen because there's a little principle here at work, and I, I hope we can all learn this finally once and for all. 
they man can have whatever plans he wants. World War Three, nuking Iran, bankrupting the world economy to make it all dependent on communism, socialism, uh, the new world order, whatever. Uh, God laughs at these. They've had these plans in place for a long, long time. What do you think restrains it? Uh, why do all the smackers predict stuff that never happens? All the smackers do. Satan loves the smackers, by the way, because it makes everyone lose their faith, right? They put their faith in, in fear mongers, not in the Lord. Hence, when it comes time to be able to withstand strong meat, all they can do is drink milk, you know, mother's milk. That's all they can handle. And that is not what the Lord is bringing up. That is not, that's the opposite direction. At long last, um, the fear mongers have created a, a, literally an internet community of faithless people that uh, claim to be beholden to Jesus Christ, to the Lord. Of people that when the tr trouble comes, they can't stand. Well, it says the workers of iniquity will fall and will not be able to rise again. So I would say the people addicted to smack would be kind of working iniquity. I mean, that would be a form of working iniquity where you're relying on something other than the Lord. And it's what it's doing is weakening your faith to the point where you fall. And in that day, in the evil day, in the hard day, in the, in the trouble day, cannot stand. Because you learn to, to you, you know, depart from me, I never knew you, you who work iniquity. I would say that the fear mongering and addiction to fear mongering or other, I could almost widen this whole thing and include anything that is, um, um, well, I can't widen it because, you know, you can have sin and then you have working of iniquity. Sin, everybody does. Okay. Working of iniquity, you've got to be in the system, hence You'd have to not be a lamb. I, I suppose there is that legal distinction, a legal distinction meaning someone who has taken the oath of the world system or as in the world words of the rock and rollers of yore, uh, pass through to the other side, meaning, um, you know, become the grateful dead or the twice dead, whatever you want to call it, i.e. that just means cut off from God and then having a ticket to the world so they can do whatever they want. But the only problem is they do it without God. Working iniquity. That's the technical legal term that's being discussed. And that's, it's, it's, that's it's almost like a scientific or anthropological. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, theme, if you will, that goes throughout the Bible. And basically what the Lord says is don't go there because, uh, you know, just like in Proverbs, there's a way that seems right to a man, but that way leads to death. Um, you know, if sinners try to entice thee, my son, do not uh, go into the collective. When they say you can have one person wait for innocent blood without uh, and, and take the spoil and we'll have a collective purse in the first uh, chapter of Proverbs, he's talking about the world system and not talking about communism or a select group over here or there. He's talking about the world. You know, um, there's definitely a dividing line between light and dark, and then those who want to go to that dark side, they can. They would be technically what's called the workers of iniquity. Many of these are called normal by the world, and their, their, any of their deeds they do in darkness are kept in darkness and not spoken of. And the world reveres them and celebrates them, and they go to church or synagogues or temples or wherever they go. But they... A lot of times very religious, philanthropic, and gee, you'd think they're the great example of how to be. And then surprisingly, shockingly, when, they're, when they, they finally you know, approach the Lord and they go, look at all the wonderful things we've done in your name. He goes, depart from me, you who work iniquity. That's almost as bad as let the dead bury the dead. Jesus being the ultra radical here, making that, that distinction that those in the world who do good works are not necessarily my children. <sighs> Ouch. Again, it can all be remedied. Those who are on the dark side, those who are on the side of light, it doesn't matter. It can all be remedied by simply realizing, Lord, you are God. Lord, Father, Abba. It's about you, not me. I, you know, less of me and more of you because it's your way, not mine. I am not God. 
my ego is not a god. And uh, the way of man and the way of the world obviously leads to poverty, death, war, rumors of war, struggle, strife, and all kinds of unhappiness. So I'm not going to go ahead and sell out to that because I don't want to foster any more of that. I want to follow you, Father. You, not me. Less of me, more of you. And of course, that will help anybody to get unstuck from their position. Because ultimately, the Lord's people are just lambs, right? They trust him and that... The, 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 um, that's another legal distinction that we could get into because, see, that doesn't mean they're not sinners, the lambs of God. doesn't mean they don't, they don't have their seasons of sin and iniquity and confusion and, and all kinds of things. It's just that they're not in the structured, uh, ranked, militaristic, lizardine world system for provision, and that's what it really comes down to. Some of these people may be very wealthy, but they're not in the world system dealing with it from that perspective. You know, the, you know it's, uh, the, the, the other thing is that the promise of rock stardom or wealth or fame, power, whatnot, uh, is often overdone. And a lot of the people who have the power and wealth and different things, they don't sell out to anybody. <laughs> I mean, you see... And a lot of people that are in a hurry to sell out because they want to be, they don't become rock stars or movie actors or celebrities or rich, but they wind up stabbing each other in the back. The workers of iniquity will fall and will not rise. The wicked, i.e. the workers of iniquity, will be cut off from the Lord, Psalm 37. Um, but again, we have the choice. We can choose to hearken unto the Lord, to realize it's about him, not us, to die to self, which is Christ, by the way. Christ assumes ourselves. We become Christ as one together, you and me. We are Christ because we have died to our individual selves, and yet we are not in a collective, but yet the Lord uses our individual gifts and things as he created us for his purpose in the world. Because, and here's the ultimate kicker of the whole thing, the Lord is ultimately in charge of the world and the world, you know, of man, of the devil, of whatever, isn't the devil's anyway, it's God's. And this whole thing is somewhat of a test to see, you know, and, and we make the choice to whom this day we shall serve. As for me and my house, the book of Joshua, as in me and my house, I will serve the Lord. You know, there's 500 of me, of us, 10,000 Philistines, but we got God on our side. Let's get your swords out, boys. Let's go, right? You got me? I'm not talking about, you know, all the stupid stuff churches do, which is, you know, point the finger at this sinner or that sinner and this sinner or that sin, whatever it is. Or gay marriage or any of these other faux issues, idiotic issues. Anything else they're doing, stupid. The core thing, the funny thing is a lot of these churches that are pointing their fingers have already lost their way because they're working iniquity, even though they're oh so holy on the outside. Jesus called them hypocrites, white sepulchers, that on the outside they're squeaky clean, and on the inside, they're filthy. A sepulcher, it's a, it's, a, it's a coffin. A tomb, whatever. A coffin. White on the outside, squeaky clean, filthy on the inside, rotting bones. Hypocrites. They put on a face for the world, but, in, but behind the scenes, they're working iniquity for profit, because they haven't gotten to the point of trusting the Lord for provision or crying out, Abba, Abba, realizing it's about him and not them, even though they go to church 50,000 times a week. Indeed, the entire church system is <laughs> the working of iniquity. <laughs> it's a kicker, because people think I'm crazy saying that, but it's absolute truth, complete 100% mind-boggling truth. Thus, we don't respect, you know, the music. I mean, this gets to music. I mean, I'm, uh, 
I am involved intensely with a with a music project right now, and I had a breakthrough just yesterday, uh, pushing out from the past and into new territory, finally, and um, which is what people want because they don't want to go back to. And this is the reason CCM is a complete total failure because they're in a rut of the past and they can't break out. Same thing with uh, um, a lot of music today. It's very it's retro or continuing to just retread on itself. Even, um, well, you know, there's some great artists, but I'm just saying that the, the people want to push on to the farther shore. They want an experience with me. Right now, it's just like, Listen, it's it's I, it's unacceptable. It's it's everything is retro. Um, you know the stations are all classic rock. The the artists are um, you know they're bringing out Motley Crue and various bands from the past to, to tour them indefinitely. Is it Pat Benatar? Well, I don't know. You know whatever the '80s bands are still on tour. People lining up to see them, and it's just so unsatisfactory. Um, but then I got started getting inspired from, um, cause I've been in the track of like Bill Laswell and Brian Eno and Art of Noise and Moby and all those in the nineties and then progressing on into soundtrack music of the two thousands of this century. And then, you know, kind of getting inspired from Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross and, and they see they're on the cutting edge right now. And then taking that further and what are, what are they doing? They're doing what I would call post civilizational uh, music because and the soundtrack today seems to be what's informing it, it's the only place you can really get uh, an experience that's new an experience that's speaking to us as as to what we are who we are right now today and that's where spiritual music needs to go desperately needs to go that's where it needs to go and that's where I'm hoping to push it to and um, or, or not push it coast into because it's not pushing it's it's actually quite fun but it's post-civilization post-apocalypse if you will post-industrial okay i guess we would call it post-industrial in a sense and then there's various people vying for like the post-apocalyptic post it's it doesn't need to necessarily be something um you know it's using the technology i believe god's actually opening these doors it's embracing the technology but you know there's all kinds of people that could argue all kinds of things i just know that i'm um caught up in something beyond me that is kind of leading into areas that are very exciting and very new and uh, it'll be released when it's finished and it won't be released until it is done and so in, in, in that time you'll you'll see it but it's not like I think a lot of the tracks I put on the internet are, are provisional meaning you know they're they're just on the way to something else but I think I'm kind of getting into that field now where there's a huge let's liken it to um uh, 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 diamonds or gold or something huge uh, or oil a huge cash reserve of which i'm not going to run out for 20 years but just coming into that and you know when you go that way you feel doomed and then elated and you go through all whenever you're doing something new you're going to go through all kinds of gyrations like that and that's because you're in new territory you're finally in something creatively legit um, yeah so I don't think I'll be going back anytime soon into what's comfortable or familiar because those things uh, tend to breed a sense of complacency it's to me the, the, the pop culture has become music you know elevator music the whole thing it's, it's post ambient now ambient is out it's, it's passe it's 90s uh, drum and bass is out, uh, dubstep, all that. It may be good in the clubs, but, you know, good when you hopped up on ecstasy and, 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 uh, and, and slammed a few drinks and, and doing this whole physical sex, drugs, rock and roll thing in the clubs. But it's so, it's, it, it doesn't feed the soul. It, it, it depletes, it destroys. It's not what's going on. What's going on is something else. And there are some people kind of, you know, nibbling at the edges of this this thing what I'm talking about. I think God's going to do an amazing thing with sound. And this this word here is sound, it's music. It's sound, word, music, other sounds. I really enjoy playing um certain effects boxes as instruments. All that is, you know, and and taking wild noise with uh, you know, getting birds or trains or planes or just noise. 
Um, yeah, it's it's about to go into a, a really brilliant, amazing new phase. And um, that is really going to be up with where we are. And most people won't be in on it. It will be 10, 15 years from now that they will finally start catching up to what's going on. But that's always been the way. Not, not 10, but 5 to 10 maybe. Things are sped up. Okay, let's just say 5 before I think that um, what you hear on the radio is going to go through a revolution. It's going to have to go through a phase where the, the songs cannot speak at us anymore or be familiar of things from the past. So we have a familiar groove that, that is tired and worn out and makes people depressed and eat at McDonald's too much and have Prozac and go crazy. It must feed the soul so that we go on in a way of sustenance. World music doesn't do that because world music, meaning ethnic music, has gone into discos. <laughs> no, that was 90s. Again, they, they all did that back in the way back time, you know, blending Indian music or uh, Middle Eastern music and then putting dance beats under it and then call it, you know, an ambient sort of things and then sticking it in the club so people would dance to it and feel they're being exotic, where it's not exotic at all. It's just basically a gimmick. So that's gone. Well, you can make a track like that today, but it's 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 not going to feed anyone, not going to fool anybody. I mean, if you really want to have flamenco music to um, to dance beats, why don't you just go to the flamenco artist direct, or the classical music people direct, or whatever direct? Why 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 deal with a middleman who's going to make it you know palpable for you? It's a gimmick. We've all done it. You know, we're all guilty, but it was just innocent because we were searching for something else. So I very much am speaking you know, about the prophecy of music, that I believe it's about to undergo a great change, and um, you know, I'm going to be there. And it already is. And it's not really in my control either. It's, uh, we're just, you know, you, you have a choice to go with it or not. You know, stay in the past or go with what's happening. And that's, you know, and we know what's happening, some of us anyway. We understand. And it's all tied in with prophecy. Oh, so let's get back to prophecy. So the prophecy of, uh, of uh, uh, the gloom and doom smackers, what they've succeeded in doing, and you know who they are, and they're, they, they run them on coast to coast, and they're, they're out there on their radio shows and whatnot, and their YouTubes. They have managed now to destroy the faith of hundreds of thousands of people who now rely on smack and gloom and doom rather than the Lord. And forgetting the fact that the Lord decides what's going to happen. Now, he had me being involved with Barack Obama to sound the alarm that Obama's, you know, I keep wanting to go back to Daniel and read that once again, the like type of the Antichrist, the personality type, and what, what's going to happen, you know, because it just, it just keeps striking me as as this is the guy, I, and I, I don't want to lock on to it because I'm not quite sure about that, but it just, every time I read it, it just seems like this is the guy. <laughs> but of course, people fall into those traps too. Um, nothing can happen without the Lord's will. All the, the, you could say the nukes are ready for Iran, they're going to nuke Iran. How, how, well, they're going to nuke Iran yesterday, the other day, another day, the rapture, yesterday, another day. There, no way you can say anything like that. If you get people dependent on gloom and doom, and, and therefore believe in Jesus so you'll escape in the rapture. That's a false argument. Nobody in their right mind is going to come to Jesus because of that argument. I'm going to scare you and tell you a lot of bad things are going to happen so that you'll go to Jesus and escape in the rapture. B.S. No, so that you'll get addicted to the gloom and doom and, and false flag terror attacks and all the predictions of, of horrible things to happen. And, and we can understand that. But the consequence of that is faithlessness. I'll just be the lone boy. I have no friends talking like this. None. Zero zilch nada. Because they can't, they, they, they can't have their ministries without their smack. And I totally understand that. Uh, you know, I mean, who wants to listen to this? This is like, you know, I'm I'm just telling it like it is, and you know, it's not very exciting. <laughs> it's not very glamorous. You know, there are certain rules that apply, which is, you know, you can't be a worker of iniquity, or Jesus, you know, the Lord, God, your Creator, your Father, Abba, 
the one who made everything in the world and all the planets and whatnot, who guides everything daily, um, he, he will say, uh, depart from me, I never knew you. So you don't sow to the world system because that's the, the second death, you know. It's the way that seems right to a man, that way to lose it. That's horrible news. That, that alone, that one sermon, I've done it legally like in a courtroom because to me, and I agree with Jonathan Clack on this, to me, the whole world is like a courtroom. I, I think that's a really uh, great way of putting it. And I've been in the court, you know, talking to your honor. Your honor, the judge would be God, right? And I have put forth the case of the things I've said. And I've invited any and all challengers. I get some really cockamamie people that are just almost to the point of just denying the whole Bible in order to make their point against my point. Yet they claim to be ministers of the Bible. So uh, they will even sell out their own principles or their own precious Bibles in order to try to contest. But once you've done that, you disqualify as someone who could challenge me in an argument. My arguments can't be broken when it comes down to stuff like that. The parsing that I've done, which the churches haven't done, is simply logic, and it's, it's clear as, as can be what Jesus means when he tells these avid churchians, these people have done everything right, never done anything wrong, and just served him and done miracles in his name and prayed, had healings, and, and, and did all the works that you see and imitated Christ and all that, how could he tell them, depart from me, you who work iniquity? How in the world, and I say, how indeed? That indeed is the problem with the church system today. It may on the outside look very nice and do a lot of good works, but it is the work of iniquity. Ultimately, it's cut off because it's a friend of the world. Why? Because it sows the world system. It, it, God deals with us individually anyway, not as a collective. As a collective, we always fail. Any collective in the world would fail with God, but individuals can succeed through repentance, through, through, through submission to God, and then let the Holy Spirit fill you and give you the truth. And the truth is hard to take. <laughs> truth is not fun. But it can be very liberating and can be joyous when you know it's about him, not us. And you know that gets the ego out of things. And then that's, that frees us up to be able to create, to do lots of things because we're not doing it. We're just kind of doing whatever we do without a bunch of self-regard and self-consciousness. And that in, in and of itself is a liberating thing that we're not under this heavy yoke of judgment all the time uh, from ourselves. And, um, you know, I've gone through that. I have a, a terrible time, you know, berating myself and judging myself. And it's something I have to get over. It's a sin, obviously. And, um, you know, it's caused me all kinds of physical and, and emotional problems. And it kind of came from an abusive background, you know. And it's something that I'm, you know, desperately wanting to grow out of. Oh, you can relate? Well, yeah. We all have our thorns in our side. There's no, you know, there's... Don't worry. There's no one walking around who's got it made. You see the, the love and light crowd. They act like they got it made at their little... Their little uh, love and light concerts, and they're all starting to say love this and love that. You hang out with them for a little while, you'll see they got the same problems you have and everybody else has. We don't get out of this thing. That doesn't mean we're going to get out of the problem. What it means is, you know, I need a way, I need light at the end of the tunnel. I need hope. I need to know where I'm headed. And that also informs me musically. How they can have a system like CCM music, Christian um, contemporary music, how they can have that, I have no, contemporary, it is not. It's some retro throwback regurgitation. How they can, I, I have no idea. I would put a bullet in my head if I had to be one of them. You know, I, I just, I couldn't stand being a guy like John Tesh or whatever, or, or whoever they are. I don't even know who they are. I, I say John Tesh because he's just a perfect example of what I'm talking about. But it's this regurgitative, backwards, um, rut, circles around and around, you know, uh, unable to do anything because they have them in a box. And, no, don't look just to Christian music. Let's take pop music and rock music. They have all these people in a box, too. They have to be like, they're putting all the old bands on tour, all the old this, and everything is retro. Everything is like regurgitation. And the new pop artists who have come out and stuff, they're doing, you know, they're back to doing blues. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm thinking of Adele. Great talent. Um, I like the music, but I, there's something derivative about it. It's just something not 
you know, I, I can't explain what I mean, but I, and I consider her to be worth all the Grammys. Yeah, it would be great if she just told them to all F off and, and do it, you know, just just uh, be outrageous, you know, whatever it is in her that she wants to do. I don't know. I don't think I'll be satisfied until all sound becomes of Yahweh. Music, word, birds chirping, wind blowing through trees, all these things becoming um, all symphonies of great genius. And then, and even then, I, I want to find out more. I want to, you know, as uh, someone said to me, the space in between, I want to know about that silence too, which is equally as loud. And more. I want to know about the sounds of the of the heavenlies, as well as the, 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 the harsh industrial sounds. And what constitutes a beat anyway? I think we can deconstruct the whole thing and that would be futuristic. And most people don't want to do that because they want to sell records. They want to sell sermons. They want to sell control. They want to sell slavery. And they want you to enslave yourself and pay them to do it. Thank you very much. I will pay you to take my soul. Thank you. Then I'll be under your control and you just guide me like a remote control robot. Thank you. The only problem is, the guy with the controls, he doesn't have a clue now what to do either. And that's what's really interesting to me. Do you get me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, maybe it goes back to the Jethro Tull song. You know, someone stole the handle and the train, it won't stop going, no way to slow down. Remember that from Aqualung? Well, maybe, maybe that's it. But I'm going way back now, way back to my youth. But maybe that's it. You know, the train is, there's nobody home. But, but there is, you see, it's, it's not a man. It's not Satan. It's not Lucifer guiding the train. And so many of the Christians believe that Satan is guiding the train and has all the power of gloom and doom and destruction. And so they're really just preaching Satanism. I mean, you know, gloom, doom, destruction, and no joy and hope in the Lord. Oh, I don't know. I guess this is what people have to do. Because an awful lot of them are doing it. They're buying into the gloom and doom and the whole, the whole you know, the Illuminati wins and we lose. And I'm telling you, well, man, how can you be a, a real follower of Yeshua if, if you've already, who who's already has the victory, therefore you are victorious in the winner's circle, and then you're giving it all up to Satan. I don't get it. Are you working iniquity in that way? Uh, is that something? No, well, maybe not, because it's not really paying the bills. What is it doing? Well, I don't know. I, I look, and it's a beautiful day, and um, I understand there's pollution in the atmosphere. Yes, I eat organic vegetables, because I see that they're, they're destroying the nutrients and just destroying the soil. And I understand that, but I also understand God will not give me a stone if I ask him for bread. So at the end of the day, I go to him. I say, Lord, guide me. What do I eat? What do I wear? What do I do? What do I say? When do I go on the internet? When do I not? When do I do one of these words? When do I not? Lord, guide me. Lord, guide me. Lord, guide me. Father, guide me. Guide me. Lord, 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 Lord. You, 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 you. Not me, 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 me. I don't want to be me who works iniquity. I want to be me who trusts you for all my existence. That's what I want to be. And where he leads me is always new and exciting and different than I would have ever imagined. And then getting me out of danger, looking back, I see, oh, I went left there instead of right. Oh, I went right. I should have gone right, but I went left. Had I gone right, oh, I would have been out of here. Oh, I went left. 
Wow, that's illogical. <laughs> and then there's even more trust when you finally go, ah, I'm not going to think about it anymore. He guides me. Every step is his. He guides me. I don't even have to think about it anymore. Yes. Yes, that's the greater faith. That's like children. Unless you can have the faith of a little child, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, is here now, not some far off thing. You enter in by having faith like a child. Then you're in the kingdom of God right now. You're in the kingdom of heaven right now, this moment. For it is within you, Luke seventeen twenty one. As if we don't, we don't even need to repeat those verses. You know what they are. Oh, gosh, you should look that up in Bullinger's. You'll see how tortured the Bullinger example is, how tortured they are not to have it be some something that kind of sounds a little new age here, smacks of spiritualism in some way. The kingdom is within you. What do you mean by that? It I mean it's not really a physical location, is it? And if it's not a physical location, you know, in the same sense we define physical as a 3D environment, okay, it's not there, where is it? What's well, in the spirit? Where's that? Well, it's within us. So I, if I look outside into the physical for the kingdom of God, I won't see it. Because it's a spiritual reality. Even if I look for New Jerusalem, I won't see it. Because it's not a physical thing. As we define physical in these terms. It may have a physicality to it that's based on another paradigm, another dimensional thing. But it's not tangible in our way of thinking. And God isn't either. God's a spirit must be worshipped in spirit and in truth, period. That is, he's within you in the spirit. The kingdom is within you in the spirit. How do you access the kingdom of heaven? Uh, you have to have a faith of a little child. Because, because children just trust and they go and they just do. They, they, let's go here. Okay, boom, they're there. Your will, not mine. And how easy is it for God to guide a child rather than someone who's wise in their own understanding. It's very difficult to guide someone who thinks they know it all. And how many people are saying, I know, and I know, and I know, and I know what God's thinking, I'm going to tell you. And really, they're just the biggest block to God leading us. And that happens, and I pray it doesn't happen with me, but I'm sure it does. I've done the same thing. In fact, everything that I may complain about or expose or say, I probably touched on all of it, including wanting desperately to work in equity. <laughs> desperately to make iniquity work for me. Never did, really. Now, I'm one of these people that even if I lie like a little tiny fib, I get caught. I just, you know, it's not going to work for me. You know, you, you, the, the, the people don't want me on the other side because, you know, they, who know, I would just blurt stuff out. I'm just crazy, you know, in that way, so, no, they could hide in the darkness with me around, so I guess that would just be a problem, but yeah, I begged the devil at times, if God won't help me get what I want, you help me, no, nope. <laughs> no, meaning I begged the world for a break, I wanted to make things work, and you know, the only, and I do make things work. I do it by not doing anything to make things work. Then it works. By not looking, I see. By not working, I accomplish. See what I mean? By not surviving, I survive. By not sowing, I reap. And that's the way it's always been. And I... By not trying... I succeed. When I try, I fail. When I grip on, I lose. When I strive, I become lost. When I set a course, I reach the, 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 the opposite destination. When I think, I have confusion, and when I rest, I have clarity of thought. When I push, I'm pulled back twice as far, and when I give up, 
I am pushed twice as far forward. And it's always been like that. Now I can complain about it and say, I'm going to keep trying, or I could just go, I give up, which is my current state. I give up. Don't know. Tomorrow, don't know. Gloom and doom, I can't hold on to it. I don't know. I give up. Yeah, but you said Obama was like the main thing we got to get involved. Yeah, we got to get involved in a detached way and throwing out Obama. But that's because the Lord told me he's, you know, a really bad dude. And, you know, people get together to God's saying, go ahead and get rid of him. You know, in other words, do something physical in the world. I, the Lord, am saying it. Yes, of course. He can say that. Get rid of this guy. Okay. Be an activist on this front. All right, fine. Is God in the world physically? You bet. Off with the Amish somewhere in some other dimension? No! Over here detached like, you know, a sannyasa in, in India? No! They just become carnival. Uh, they just become what I would call, uh, uh, you know, sort of... Uh, like soothsayer, like, you know, like carnival people. You know, like an event, like a like a, a ride to go on, you know, go see the sannyas and, and go see the sadhus and give them some money and get a little blessing and whatnot. I mean, it's not, it's not like separation unto, um, well, watching them is really a tortured thing too because they try, you know, they, there's a whole community of sadhus that all compete with each other to be more sadhu than the other guy. And that was what the Buddha, uh, uh, Siddhartha, his complaint was with the ascetics, he couldn't go along with the yogis and the ascetics because they were all competing with each other of who is so oh so holy and how much more uh, less pieces of rice would they eat and how much more asceticism would they be and how cool that was. Almost like it's some sort of, you know, and they're all playing little gods themselves. That's my point. That doesn't mean there isn't a priest who isn't devout a sadhu who isn't absolutely, you know, correct. And, well, you know, a lot of these are, you know, they, they're going for Shiva, then they're going for Satan anyway. So it doesn't matter because, ah, uh, believe me, I've been all through it, the Eastern religions, and uh, I searched throughout them all, Taoism, Buddhism, Hinduism, thisism, thatism, asceticism, uh, really put a lot into it. And, uh, and Zen to heal my mind. I found people hiding out in the Zen monasteries who seemed to be uh, shielded from the world. And I envied them. But then there was, but then there wasn't anything going on. <laughs> and with that, I bid you shalom, shalom. I love you. I'm praying for you, and I and I, and I hope this you know helped. It it certainly helped me. And I'm going to just upload this directly and not you know, going right from. Uh, um, this to the site, hopefully, and uh, I'll see you next time.